Welcome to this lesson on slope. Slope is the rate of change on a linear graph. And you can find rate of change on more than just a linear graph, but in these lessons we're going to focus on linear graphs or lines. And slope has many definitions besides rate of change. It's also the change in y over the change in x. Or you can write that using symbols, delta y over delta x. And delta is this symbol here, and it means change in. It's also rise over run, or the steepness of a line. So it's basically how much you're changing vertically, change in y, vertical, think the y-axis is vertical, over how much you're changing horizontally, x. The letter m is used to represent slope, so if you see m equals a number, that is your slope. And slope is written as a fraction in simplest form. Now it can also be a whole number, so if I have a slope of um, 2, that's fine, or I can have a slope of 3 fourths, but you just want to make sure you always simplify your fractions. And slope is an important part of linear functions or lines, and it will help us when we are graphing and solving real world problems. Alright, so let's talk about the types of slope. There are four different types of slope. Positive means the line rises from left to right, and that's when m is a positive number. So like m equals positive 5 or positive 1 half. And then negative means the line is going to fall from left to right. And that's when m is a negative number, like negative 10 or negative 3 fourths. A slope of zero means you're going to have a horizontal line. And then undefined slope is a, a vertical line. And that is when your m is actually not even a number, it's undefined. And that happens when you divide by zero. And we'll talk a little more about that, how you divide by zero and why that's undefined. So one way I remember a zero and undefined, because positive and negative, they're pretty easy to just tell from a graph. But if you think about skiing, if you've ever been snow skiing or seen it on TV, if you are on flat, level land and you're trying to ski, you're not gonna go anywhere. You're just gonna stand still, you're gonna be going zero miles per hour because you need some type of slope, some type of steepness to ski. So if you're on flat land, you're going zero miles per hour. You're not going anywhere. Now, if you try to ski on a mountain that looks like this, that's straight up and down, it may not turn out very well for you. It's undefined. You don't want to do that. So vertical, straight up and down, undefined. Don't do it. Flat land, you're going zero miles per hour. That's one way to remember it. Okay, so let's talk about finding slope from a graph. So we can find slope of a graphed line by counting the rise over the run. And rise means how far it is up and down, vertical distance, the change in y. Run means how far it is horizontally, the change in x. Okay, so the first thing I always do is if I'm looking at a line, I determine, okay, is this a positive or a negative slope or is it something else? So in that first example, I can look at that graph and tell it's falling from left to right. Remember, you read a graph like you read a book, left to right. So if it's falling from left to right, that means my slope is going to be negative. So I determine the sign first. It's negative slope. Then you want to pick two points on that line. It doesn't matter which two points. I already have two for you, but you can pick any two. And you want to count the rise, how far it is vertically between the points, over the run, how far it is horizontally between the points. So my vertical distance between these two points is 1, 2, 3, 4. And my horizontal distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So rise is 4, run is 5. So my slope is negative 4 fifths. Always check to make sure that you can't reduce that or simplify any further. And you can't, so that is my slope, negative 4 fifths. 
All right, on the next example, I can tell from the graph that this is a positive slope. So I know it's positive. And then I have two points here. So I'm going to count how far it is vertically, the vertical distance, one, two, three, over the horizontal distance, one, two. All right, make sure you can't reduce that any. So my slope is three over two. You don't have to write the positive, just three over two. All right, the next one, if I'm looking at this, this is not positive, it's not negative, it's a vertical line. So you can remember that a vertical line has an undefined slope, but let's prove it. Let's prove why it is undefined. So I'm gonna count my vertical distance over my horizontal distance. So vertical, one, two, three, four, five, over horizontal distance. Well, there is no horizontal distance. I'm not going left or right any, I'm just going straight up. So there's zero run. Now, if you take your calculator and try to divide five by zero, it'll give you an error. It might say divide by zero error or undefined because you can't divide a number by zero. So that is why a vertical line has an undefined slope. Okay, go ahead and complete the practice and then you can check that with your teacher and then we will move on to the next set of notes. So pause the video now and complete that practice. All right, you should have completed the practice and checked with your teacher. Now let's move on to finding slope given two points. So there is a formula for slope and it's a formula you use when you're given two coordinate points, two ordered pairs. And remember an ordered pair is written like this, parentheses x comma y. So this is the formula here. Now it may look crazy with all those letters and numbers, but all this is saying is, first of all, we know m is slope, so the slope equals. And this is just telling me the change in y, the difference in the y values, over the change in x, the difference in the x values. So how far I'm going up and down, how far I'm going left and right, the rise over the run. So it's just another way to write what we have already been doing. Now, I will say, if you have graph paper or your teacher gives you graph paper, you can totally just graph these two points on a graph and count the rise over run. That is completely fine. But I just wanna show you another way that you can do that if you don't have graph paper or if you don't wanna graph it. Okay, so I'm gonna label my two points. I'm gonna label this one x sub one, y sub one just to say that's the first point, and then x sub two, y sub two, just to say that's the second point. So we have two points here. So my slope is equal to y two minus y one, so nine minus five, over x two minus x one, so four minus three. So I'm finding the difference in the y values over the difference in the x. Okay, so nine minus five, that's four, 4 minus 3, that is 1, and that will reduce to 4. So my slope is 4. All right, number 2, a line that passes through the points 4, negative 2, and 0, 5. And we want to find the slope of that line. So same thing. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 minus y1, and be careful because we have 5 minus a negative 2, which you probably know is the same thing as 5 plus 2 if you want to change it. And then x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, so 5 plus 2, that's 7. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Now for slope, you can leave it as an improper fraction, that's fine, and it's actually easier to graph when you leave it as an improper fraction instead of trying to change it to a mixed number or a decimal. So we're just gonna leave it, we can't reduce that any. And we're just gonna put that negative out front because seven divided by a negative four, that's the same thing as negative seven over four. And that negative is important because that tells us the slope is falling, so the graph looks like that, it's falling from left to right. All right, let's do a few more examples. 
So if you want to label your points, Okay, so y2 minus y1, and again, you can change that to plus. Minus a negative is the same thing as plus. x of 2 minus x of 1. All right, so 0 plus 6 is 6. 8 minus 0 is 8. And we can reduce that. Always simplify your fraction. That simplifies to 3 fourths. All right. Next up, label my points. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Let's see, 2 minus 6, that's negative 4. 3 minus 3 is 0. All right, so if you have 0 in the denominator, that is going to be undefined. You can't divide by 0. So undefined. All right. Label my points. Go ahead and try three and four by yourself. Okay, if you need more time, feel free to pause the video. I'm gonna go ahead and go over these. So y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. All right, 2 minus 2 is 0. And negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. 0 divided by negative 9, that is 0. So if 0 is in the numerator, then your slope is 0, which remember means just a horizontal line. And on number 2, this would have been a vertical line. All right, and number 4. Okay, so we have negative 10 over negative 3. I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction. Negative divided by negative is a positive. So positive 10 over 3. Okie doke. The last two are a little bit different. So let's read it. A line has a slope of negative 2. So you're given the answer. You know the slope is negative 2. And it passes through the points negative 4, y, and 1, 0. And we want to solve for y. So in this case, we're given the slope and we're trying to go backwards and find one of the y values for the ordered pair. So I'm still going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. So remember, this is my formula. I already had the slope is negative 2. So negative 2 equals y2 minus y1, we don't know y1, so I'm just going to call it y, over x2 minus x1. All right, so that's positive. And I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to erase my formula here. And let's see, 1 plus 4, that's 5. So I have, I'm going to write it over here. All right, now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to get y by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. So I have negative 10 equals 0 minus y. I did not write this well. Let's erase this and keep moving on. All right, so um, let's see. I'm going to subtract, well, 0 minus y. Do I really need to subtract that 0? No, it's just going to give me the same thing back. So really, we have this. Remember that negative stays with the y because it's in front of it. Whatever sign's in front of the term stays with that term. y is still not by itself, though, so I need to get rid of that negative by dividing by negative 1. So my y is 10. Okay, let's try that again, and I'll write this one better. Here's x1, y1, x2, y2. My slope is 4. So 4 equals m equals y2 minus y1, so y minus 4, and then x2 minus x1, which is plus. So we have 4 equals y minus 4 over 10. Now I'm going to get rid of the divided by 10 by multiplying by 10, doing the inverse operation. So I have 40 equals y minus 4. 
And then to get y by itself, to isolate y, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So 44 equals y. All right, you can stop the video now and complete slope practice two and check it with your teacher.